Owlab, one of the most innovative and unique of the large keyboard design studios currently producing new work. From the legendary Jelly Epic, to the technology-packed Jelly Evolve, to this, the Vento 80. Let's dive in. The Vento 80 comes with two main pieces of packaging. Let's start with the carrying case. In here are some accessories, including replacement bottom feet, magnetic daughter boards for the side, and gaskets, and also our badge. We also, of course, get some owl stabs to use. In this envelope is the PCB, and I got the 1.6mm no flex cut version. Here's a peek at the magnetic daughter board. Under it is an aluminum plate and various foams, including plate foam, PE foam, and some bottom case foams. Now we can get to the main box. This has a few different sections that slide out, and we can finally access our board, which is in this microfiber sheath. Here is the board itself, with a polycarbonate plate already installed. The Vento 80 is a leaf spring mounted TKL. We have 5 PCB options, 4 hot swap and 1 solder. Two of the hot swap PCBs are 6.25U and 2 are 7U, with each layout having both 1.2mm flex cut and 1.6mm non flex cut options. All of these only support wired connections and VIA. As for support, all 4 hot swap PCBs only have step caps, and the solder PCB supports step caps, split left shift, 6.25U and 7U bottom row, split right shift, ISO enter, and split backspace. For plates, we have polycarbonate, palm, FR4, aluminum, and carbon fiber. For colors, we have five anodized colorways, wisteria, lime, glacier blue, silver with mocha chamfers, and black with golden chamfers, and also four spray-coated colorways, white, retro white, bubblegum, and red. Lastly, the Vento 80 will start at $510, making it quite hefty for both a custom keyboard and a TKL. In the PCB are the included owl stabs looped with 205 grade 0 and BDZ, allowed on the aluminum plate, and in here go Cherry MX2A Blacks. These are MX Blacks that have been factory looped, and I'm throwing them in here stock because I really want to stress test the quality of this board's sound profile. With the switches in, now we can get to the gaskets. The Vento 80 uses the same nipple style gaskets as the Jelly Evolve. We also need to install a magnetic daughter board for the right side button and RGB badge. With the inner assembly done, we can get to the case. It opens up with the press of a button, and we can lay the inner assembly onto the leaf springs, letting the PCB catch the magnetic daughter board. I'll push the other daughter board in its slot, and we can reinstall the top case. Lastly, I'll install a GMK Space Cadet. Before I forget, we'll also peel off the bottom weight protection, and install the bottom badge. Let's take a listen. The most important part of the sound profile when you make a keyboard build with cherry switches is the spacebar, and I think it holds up pretty well here. The alphas are a bit thin and quiet, and I suspect some case foam might help a bit. The switches would definitely benefit from some films too, which would ease up the high end and the scratchiness sound. Since the MX2A blacks are factory pre-looped, they have a good bit of difference from stock blacks both in terms of the stock sound and feel, but are still kinda scratchy. I used the MX2A Browns in the Universe build I did earlier in February, and those had a much more pleasant stock sound and feel in terms of volume and scratchiness. So if you want usable stock cherries, I would recommend the MX2A Browns over the blacks. As for the case, there's a decent bit of hollowness and resonance when you pick it up. This is very strange to me as there is an internal weight as well as integrated force break mod in the top case, which should help clean up the sound profile. But the interior also isn't airtight due to the case release mechanism, which we'll talk about later. This is more reason to use the case foam. Luckily, with the screwless case and magnetic daughter board, this modification takes virtually no time and effort. I quite like the leaf spring mount in the Jelly Evolve, and it's the same experience here. Despite using an aluminum plate and 1.6mm no flex cut PCB, there's still visible bounce on the board. Just like the Jelly Evolve, it's a very springy and enjoyable feeling bounce compared to boards with thick gasket mounts, which can end up feeling kinda sluggish and mushy. With the Vento 80, you can definitely get away with using harder configurations, because the leaf springs do a great job at adding interest to the board's feel, regardless of how stiff your inner assembly is. The board is damn heavy, 
heavier than my Brass Bottom Mode 75. It's the new heaviest bore I own, and this is because it has a not so small bottom weight as well as an internal weight. For the design, let's dissect the top first. On the right is a jelly style accent, except this time it no longer protrudes from the board and has nicely diffused RGB lighting. We also have a bright red button here, which cycles the lighting effects for the badge. On the side, we can see that the top case is an entirely different layer from the rest of the board, which allows Owlab to implement its unique screwless latch mechanism to open and close the case. By pressing on the protruding button near the bottom, the top case is gently released from the board, allowing you to access the internals in seconds and without ever picking the board up. The screwless mechanism definitely looks and feels more premium compared to its first generation version in the Jelly Evolve. This time, it's a metal release latch instead of a plastic tab. The way the mechanism itself works is also slightly different. The Jelly Evolve had this plastic tab as part of the top case, whereas now the top case has latches that click into parts of the bottom case. This ends up working worse for me, as I have to push down really hard to get these latches to click into the bottom case. Sometimes one side will click in and the other side won't, and it's really hard to tell because the sound they make when they slot in is so quiet. I think there are definitely still improvements to make in this regard. Just like the Jelly Evolve, the bottom weight section is different from the mid case. It actually has a bit of a gap in the middle, which almost gives the illusion that the upper cases are floating. This is actually really similar to the silhouette of the Jelly Evolve, but with a little less glamour, and also no RGB lighting. When we flip the board over, we can see the interesting asymmetrical bottom, with our weight piece, some extra badging, the different bottom feet designs, and the separation between this bottom grey part and the white upper cases. Something I don't like about the design here is the exposure of the case release mechanism. Since it's all plastic except for the release buttons, it ends up looking kind of cheap and almost like I'm missing parts of the bottom. Although it is really interesting to release the top case with the board upside down and watch how the mechanism actually works. For the material quality, I got a spray coated case, which is actually much different from the spray coating I had reviewing the QK75 by Cordy Keys. Although it has the same name, the grains in the spray coating have a much subtler shine, which I like better. This also might be because my QK75 was black and this Vento 80 is white so take my analysis with a grain of salt. I also think the Vento 80 feels much different to the touch, with an overall finer texture that's still kind of rough. The grey bottom weight area is anodized. It's really interesting to feel the smooth anodization and compare it to the rough spray coating finish. I guess a weird upside is that the spray coating does make the board grippier, and since it's super heavy, this added grippiness makes it just a bit easier to pick up. Going with a spray coated finish is definitely a taste thing, but since it's much more subtle this time around, I think it'll be a much more viable choice for people's builds compared to the QK75. At the end of the day, the Vento 80 pretty perfectly encapsulates Owlab. A large focus on unique, bold design, and no shortage of new technology and exploration into what the future of custom keyboards could look and feel like. And while its price point definitely puts it out of most budgets, the Vento 80 proves to be another excellent offering from Owlab.